Armand Simmons for the Los Angeles Times. A cleric who has pledged to forge better relations with the international community was declared Iran's president over the weekend. 64-year-old Hassan Rouhani received more than half of all votes cast, surprisingly eliminating the need for a runoff election. The former parliamentarian will replace two-term president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, who was prohibited by law from seeking a consecutive third term. The Times reports that although Rouhani is considered somewhat conservative, during his campaign he reached out to reformist voters on sensitive issues such as personal rights, gender equality and artistic freedom. He has also vowed to end the Islamic Republic's relative isolation by, by seeking more positive interaction with the world. Join me to talk about the possible implications of Rouhani's presidency is Times Senior International Affairs writer Carol J. Williams. Welcome, Carol. Hi, Anne. So tell me, Carol, first of all, what do we know about uh, the president-elect Rouhani? Is he really a moderate? Well, we know he's coming from the inside of the religious hierarchy. He's been in senior positions for decades, so he's not likely to be dramatically different from the you know, policies and the, the platforms of the supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. But he did, during the campaign, make some fairly you know, surprising departures from the hard line giving people you know, confidence that there will be more political freedom and more personal freedom in Iran. And also his most striking departure from the status quo is his position that the Iranian nuclear programs are the cause of the economic hardship that Iranians are going through right now. And he's made comments like, you know, in order to get something from the international community, they're going to have to give something. Well, he's actually promised to forge better relations with the international community, I understand. What can the United States and its allies expect? Well, I think they can expect, you know, in the short term, just maybe a little change in the atmospherics and in the style of his leadership. You know, Ahmadinejad has been so combative and anti-Western in his rhetoric that it'll be something of a breath of fresh air to have a political leader who is making, you know, coherent, you know, soft-spoken overtures to the international community rather than, you know, vowing its destruction. So I think it'll be a while before he can actually deliver on any compromises or, you know, offers to put the international community at ease about its nuclear programs. Um, you mentioned the nuclear program, so are we really going to see any type of compromise? Do you think not? Well, it was interesting this morning, the Russian foreign minister said that he had spoken with Iranian leaders and that they would be willing to cease production of or, or enrichment of uranium to 20%, which is the level that the international community is concerned could be easily converted to weapons grade. So that overture has compounded the you know hopefulness that's <laughs> followed Rouhani's election, so it, it could be that they're all of a mind to have a breakthrough from this very strong, divisive standoff that has prevailed for the last few years. But how much power does he really have? After all, the Ayatollah Khamenei is a supreme leader, and he has veto power, so will Rouhani really have a, a measure of power? The president doesn't have power over security matters or foreign affairs. But the fact that Rouhani is an insider, he may be able to persuade the hardliners and others in the religious regime that it's time to you know, make some different moves, that the country's suffering, the, the economy is in shambles, they've lost half the value of their currency over the past year, and people are very frustrated and very angry. And unless something changes, you know, there's the potential for political eruption. Well, that's interesting. What kind of message does it actually send that uh, the Iranian people elected this so-called centrist and pragmatist? I think the Iranian voters were telling the leadership that we're not going to put up with this endlessly. You know, in 2009, it's widely believed that a reformist candidate won the election, but the regime fiddled the results and made Ahmadinejad president. That spurred months of very angry demonstrations that were 
brutally dispersed after a while and you know the the public demonstrations have stopped but the resentment hasn't and I think there's some recognition now in the leadership that they have to allow a little you know venting to be permissible. Well this is going to be a really interesting story to watch Carol. Thank you for your insight. Thank you. For more on this and other stories please visit latimes.com.